Okay, good morning. My name is Manabu Otsuka. Today, I will talk about this paper titled Identification of Photo-Induced Spin Tributary Recombination Centers Situated at Silicon Surface and Silicon-Silicon Dioxide Interfaces. So this presentation is divided into three parts. Introduction and experimental method and results about the new center, SIK-1. We found this K1 center for the first time. So the origin of this name, KU, comes from KU University. So first, first of all, I'll talk about the introduction. So in order to understand what is K1, it is important to know the history of dangling bone uh, type studies. So I will explain about this topic. So uh, in 1971, the dangling bone was found by Professor Nishi's group at the silicon silicon dioxide interface by using the EPR. After this report, there are many kinds of PV type centers uh, reported, such as a PV center for 111 and 110 interface, and PV0 center for 100 interface, and PV1 center for, for 100 interface. This dangling bone defect is uh, known as the carrier trump centers, so they cause the uh, instability of device performance, such as the uh, uh, reduction of mobility. So the understanding of dangling bone defect is important for semiconductor industry. However, our group found that the uh, uh, new dangling bone defect called PM center. This PM center is uh, analyzed using the isotopically enriched silicon. The signal of PM center is appear like this figure. So this study, uh, this research reveals that the symmetry and G factor of the PM center is very close to those of the A center. However, this sample didn't give the signal of SIL1, which is excited triplet set of the A center. So in this research, uh, we concluded that PM center is a new dangling center whose structure is similar to that of the negatively charged A center. And the model of the PM center is uh, expected to the uh, two neighboring dangling bone, uh, bone from silicon atoms. So in previous page, we uh, we talked about the A center and the SIL1. So I will explain what is A center and SIL1. This defect is consists of the oxygen and vacancy. And, the two, uh, and this uh, dangling bone from two silicon atoms forms the molecular orbital. The spectrum of the A center comes from the spin state S equal one half, and the uh, Spectra of the SISL1 comes from the spin state S equal 1. And the spectrum of SISL1 is reported in 1971 by the Professor Glauer's group. And the spectrum of the SIK1 is the related to this uh, A center and SISL1 spectrum. So uh, before the talking, talking about the uh, experimental results, I'll talk about the experimental method. In this experiment, we use the spin-dependent recombination EPR. So I will explain about this theory. Like the left figure, when the sample is eliminated, carrier is produced. Then the electron is trapped by the donor level and defect level. At the steady state, the direction of the donor electron spin at donor level and defect level is parallel. So the recombination is prohibited by uh, spin blockade by Pauli's exclusion principle. Then, in the left, right figure, let's think about the con uh, situation that the electron spin at defect level is flipped by EPR. In that situation, the direction of the electron spin at the donor level and defect level become anti-parallel. So the recombination is allowed. And if the recombination, uh, recombination 
occurs, the uh, carrier density changes. And in SDR EPR measurement, we detect the signals through the change of carrier density. This method is known as a highly sensitive method compared to the conventional EPR. Then I'll explain the experimental condition. Left figure is outline of the equipment. Microwave transfers through the waveguide and stored in the cavity, and the sample is set in this cavity. And the static magnetic field is applied. In this situation, we, if we sweep the magnetic field, resonance occurs at the particular point, and the carrier density decreases, as I said before. If the carrier density decreases, the Q factor of this cavity changes, and we could obtain the CDR repair signal. Right figure is the outline of the cavity. The sample is set in this sample holder, and we can rotate this sample holder to check the angular dependence of the signal. Then I will explain the experimental results. First of all, I, uh, I want to show you the spectra of xik one this is a result of the SDR EPR measurement of the closed zone silicon. Horizontal axis is a magnetic field, and the vertical axis is a SDR EPR spectra. As you can see, there are four characteristic uh, uh, peaks can be observed. We detected this signal for the first time, so we named this, uh, this spectra as the SIK1. So we found the new signal. Then what we have to do in the next step is to check the structure of the, this uh, spectra defect. In order to check the symmetry of the defect, uh, we check the angular dependence of this K1 spectrum. This figure shows the result. Horizontal axis is the angle between, the, between sample and the magnetic field. And the vertical axis is a magnetic field. And the red dot line is a resonance point of K1. And blue dot line is a calculation value of the SISL1. From, uh, from this result, uh, we conclude that the SIK1, a uh, symmetry of SIK1, is the same as the SISL1, which is an excited triplet set of A center. So we need to check whether the SIK1 is the same as SL1 or not. In order to check this result, uh, we, we, check the, uh, we check the CDR EPR signal of the chokrasky grown silicon and the Chokras, uh, irradiated chokrasky grown silicon. This graph shows the result. Line A corresponds to the before imparted silicon sample and line B corresponds to the irradiated, irradiated silicon sample. From the uh, line B, the we could detect the signal of SL1 and the K1 at the same time. So we concluded that the SIK1 is the difference from the SIK, SIK1 is different from the SISL1. So this table shows the comparison of the SIK1 and the SL1. Usually, SISL1 can be observed in irradiated chokrasky grown silicon because the SL1 consists of the oxygen and vacancy. So like this figure, the SL1 can be observed only in the chokrasky silicon. However, in this experiment, SIK1 can be observed both chokrasky grown silicon and frozen grown silicon. So the K1 is different from the SL1.
Then in next experiment, I check the structure of SIK1. So one of the way to analyze the origin of the K1 is to check the is to remove the oxide layer by the HF and check the signal again. In this experiment, we uh, we put the silicon in the dilute HF and check the signal again. Uh, this uh, figure shows the result. First line is a uh, signal before the HF treatment, and second one is a uh, uh, signal just after the HF treatment. From these two lines, the K1 signal becomes uh, intensity of K1 signal decreased. Then we put the sample in air for six days and 11 days and check the K1 signal again. From these, from these results, uh, uh, K1 signal, uh, intensity of K1 signal increased. So the, we concluded that SIK1 stays mainly the SISI onto interfaces. And moreover, the K1 signal intensity can also uh, observed at the uh, HF treatment sample. So K1 can also exist at the uh, silicon surface. So this page shows the effect of the HF treatment. Horizontal axis is the time after the removal of oxide layer, and vertical axis is the normal signal intensity. From this graph, the signal intensity of K1 increases with the formation of the native oxide layer. And this is, this is a figure of the angular dependence of K1. This ex experimental results also give the information about the structure of defect. <coughs> red dot is a, a resonance point of K1. And red solid curve is a calculated value of the K1 signal. If the K1 signal exists at the bulk side, all these solid lines should be detected. However, only the, in this experiment, only two directions uh, which are parallel to the uh, silicon surface can be detected, like this figure. So from this result, we concluded that the SIK K1 is an implant defect. So this, from this experiment, we could obtain the uh, information about the SIK1. And the, this, uh, this table shows the comparison of K1 and the PM and the other defects, like PM and the A center. At the PM center, locates at the SI SIO2 interface. And this PM center has a similar sy symmetry to the A center. And K1 center exists, also exists at the SISL2 interface. And this symmetry of K1 is similar to SISL1. And this SISL1 is the excited triple set of A center. So from this experiment, we concluded that SIK1 spectrum it may be due to the excited triple set of PM center. However, the further studies are needed to analyze the microscopic structure of this center. So, conclusion. We found the new triplet center labeled SIK1 using the SDR EPR method. Second, the SIK1 exists at the SIO2 interface and the silicon surface. Third, the SIK1 spectrum seems to arise from the triplet state of PM center. That's all. Thank you for kind attention.